colour. A funny thing I have always seemed to struggle to get right. In my early days of photography, I used to think that just sliding the colour temperature to yellow made my photos look good. And when it came to video, I spent countless hours watching tutorials trying to find the perfect look for my videos. But it wasn't until it clicked for me this year, I finally started to figure out that secret source. So today, I'm breaking down my current colour grading process. So grab yourself a cup of tea, pull up a chair, and let's get into this. Now this all relies on a power grade and DaVinci Resolve as well. But what is a power grade? Well, if you're in the video space, you may have heard of a LUT before, which is a thing you can apply to your footage, normally log footage, to give it a certain visual style. Now, a power grade also gives your footage often a particular look. However, the advantage of a power grade over, say, a LUT is you can go in and change every single individual setting to your heart's content, which, when you're working in different lighting scenarios, gives you a lot more flexibility. Now, for me, I was using the film emulation CinePrint 16 up until very recently. However, today, as of recording, the new version, CinePrint 35, just dropped. Now, they are fairly similar in the way you use them, so today we're going to talk about how I use this new version. One caveat with this is CinePrint 35 does actually cost money. It's just under 70 USD, but considering the amount of work that went into it, it is totally worth it. But let's talk you through how you install it and then we'll go through how you use it on some of my clips. Let's do it. So I've got Resolve open here. I'm gonna jump over to my color page and actually what I wanna do before I import the power grade is I wanna create a new power grade album to sit all of these in, because there is quite a few. So I'm gonna name it CinePrint35. Now, inside here, I'm gonna right click Go import. When you downloaded CinePrint 35, it'll come as a zip file. So you just want to unzip that, go into the power grade section. Now you're presented with a bunch of different cameras here. I use Sony, so I'm going to import the Sony one. Most of the cameras are covered here. You can also use the one for other cameras, which allows you to use the CST. So there is that setup. But we're going to go into the Sony S-Log3 one, and I'm going to select all these .DRX files and import them. So you've got a few different versions here. Each one comes in a 35 mil version and a 16 mil version. So you've got 500T, 160T and 250D. And what I'm gonna quickly do is jump over to my example clips, which are the ones I wanna use for showing you how to grade today. So we've got this clip, it was shot probably about 1, 2 p.m. ish. So we've got fairly direct sunlight. You know, it's a pretty typical outdoor shot. I've been playing around with the 500T version and I think it's the one I prefer the most. I'm not a massive fan of the 160T, which is based off the Fuji stocks. Same thing with my film camera. I don't really like shooting Fuji that much. So I would probably stick with the 500T or the 250D for my personal preference. So we're gonna grab the 500T and we're gonna dump it onto our clip, which immediately kind of looks bad. And there's a lot of nodes here. The good thing is, even though there is a ton of nodes, you don't really need to touch most of them. Generally, you're just gonna be adjusting your exposure and white balance, and then the same for your post-conversion exposure and white balance. And that will get you pretty much 99% of the way there. So this is perfect for the way I like to work. So before I go in and start messing around with all these different nodes, I'm gonna jump here into the grain node because you have two different options for this. You have a HD grain and you have a 4K grain, which does actually make a difference. This is 4K footage. My timeline is 4K, so I'm gonna activate this one with Command D and deactivate the other one, jump back out, and that's sorted. If I kind of punch in, you can see we're getting this really nice grain happening now. It does slow down your timeline a fair bit. So when you're playing back, probably turn it off and then just turn it on before you export. So for my stuff, I generally don't like to have the halation and grain turned on. The halation on this new version is a lot more physically accurate to what you actually would get when shooting film. So if I really want to go all out in that look, I probably will turn it on. But generally, I just want that warm, cozy feeling to my footage rather than going the full nine yards with the whole emulation. So I'm gonna turn off the grain. I'm gonna turn off halation because I'm not gonna be using either of those. Now, denoise, 
technically you are meant to use this. The creator recommends using this. I like to avoid it as much as possible, but if you need it, you need it and you can kind of go from there. So you can kind of see this is divided into almost four layers is kind of the best way to think about it. You've got this top layer here, which is pre everything. So it's kind of working on your like log footage almost to get the exposure and white balance correct. This part down here is basically doing a bunch of the look. This is where you kind of go in and tweak your grade to affect different looks. And if you wanted to adjust more colors and stuff, you would add stuff in there as well. And this finally is the post conversion where it does all the magic, I guess. I'm really not a technical person with this, so apologies, I'm not a professional. I just really like using it. You can tell I'm excited about this because I, my brain is not. Anyway, we're gonna have to fix this clip up. First thing, this exposure is a bit cooked. So I'm gonna jump over to my primaries. Now for this, I'm just gonna use the offset wheel. And right now I'm mostly focusing on my face here, especially the parts in the highlight. Cause when I was shooting, that's what I wanted to be exposed well, but I also don't wanna to lose too much detail by going all the way down there. So I'm probably gonna sit it somewhere about there. That's looking pretty nice. And thankfully I haven't overexposed my background. So I have to mess around with that. The white balance, this isn't too bad on my face. I do tend to go a little bit warmer, but I'm probably just gonna bring this up ever so slightly to around about 90. Now this pre-node essentially reduces the contrast before you convert everything. So you kind of seem to get more dynamic range in your image. I'm gonna turn that on. I'm gonna jump down here to my contrast node down here. Now you could increase the contrast and use the pivot for this one. I prefer to just do it with the gain and lift. So I'm just gonna bring my gain up a bit and bring down my shadows just ever so slightly. I don't wanna crush it too much as I still like that light and airy feeling to it to some extent. So I definitely like a warmer tone to my footage. Now there actually is this warm WP node down here. So if you come down here to your key tab, you can actually change the gain to one. And this kind of warms up the footage actually a fair bit, does a nice job. And what I also like to do is jump into here in the primaries. I'm gonna grab my offset and I'm gonna tweak it. Ever. Like you can kind of see if I bring it that way, it starts to get fairly orange. So you want to do it fairly subtly, just push it a little bit. If I can turn that off and on, you kind of notice the different. I'm just going to come back here because it looks like I need to just punch the highlights a little bit more and bring down the shadows just to add a little bit of punch. And that there, it's starting to look really, really nice. Now you do also have this pastel node, which I kind of like to use because it, you know, I guess it turns everything pastel. There isn't really a better way to say that. So I full screen this, this is looking pretty nice now. I'm really happy with the way it is. I like my stuff to look nice, but not be super overpowering and in your face. And this is exactly how I want it. It's a little bit trickier when you are working in direct sunlight. If I wasn't under the shade of this tree, this would be a lot harder to grade, but I'm really happy with that. So let's move on to the second example. Now this is a bit of a different lighting scenario because this was actually shot at golden hour back where I used to live. The sun is really nicely hitting my head. So I'm getting a little bit of silhouette action happening here. Let's dump this on one more time. I'm gonna go through this pretty quick. I'm just gonna turn off the grain and the halation to start and start with our exposure. So this, gonna have to crank this up a fair bit because I don't want my face too silhouetted. The subject matter of this, as you would have seen in the intro, is more the lighting and the look of the scene rather than me as the subject. So I don't need too much information there. Gonna grab this white balance. This is totally scuffed. So we're gonna we're gonna tweak this. Doesn't have to be crazy warm because we'll warm it up later, but we probably want it sitting sitting about there. It's looking pretty decent. And I'm gonna just probably shift the tint. The biggest trick I learned about watching the videos about the new CinePrint 35 is when you are doing the white balancing to focus on the actual skin tones because you get all these weird shades happening in the whites and grays, you can't really use that as a reference point. So you need to focus on the skin. So I'm looking especially where the sun's hitting it and also in the shadow area here. And I might just have a little bit more of a play. I just wanna make sure the reds are coming out. I might just bring up the exposure ever so slightly. 
cool. So that's looking pretty good. I'm going to turn on my pre-convert and come down here and it is contrast time, baby. So crank those highlights. I do want the hair to kind of get overexposed. So I'm going to bring that back down. So as before, I'm going to jump down here to the warm WP and we're going to crank that right up to one. I think I might shift it ever so slightly in the offset. We're just going to have a play. It's all color grading really is, is having a play and having a fiddle to see what looks nice. I kind of, I don't think I'm actually going to affect that too much, to be honest. I'm pretty happy with where it's, where it's chilling. So I'm actually really happy with the way I look in this shot. However, this green here doesn't really suit the rest of the kind of yellowy earthy tones we're getting, especially from the trees behind it. So we're going to fix that up. So I'm going to drag this stuff all across, right click. I'm going to add a serial node and I'm just going to label this grass. If we jump down here into the hue versus saturation, and we've also got hue versus hue, which is the tab we want. It's just in the curves panel. Add in a few points here. This is how I like to start. And then I just kind of grab stuff and I see where everything is. That looks like the grass there. And that is kind of, oh wow, that's really crazy. That's where the rest of the grass is. And that is affecting my face a bit as well, but we'll deal with that in a second. So I'm gonna bring this, I'm gonna bring that back down to the way it was. So we're gonna shift, so we can kind of shift this. If we go down, super green. If we go up, tease more in that yellow kind of space, which is what I want. Don't want to go too hard on this. Again, it's like super, super subtle. But if I turn it off and turn it on, it just helps marry the image a little bit better. What I'm also going to do, which is also really handy, is you can actually adjust the saturation of it as well, which I can kind of pull all this color out if I want to. I'm going to pull a fair bit of the green out. That's looking really, really nice now. I quite like that. The skin looks really nice. All right, third and final example. This is shot on an overcast day. I just kind of wanted to go through a few different lighting scenarios because the way you use it does somewhat vary, not massively, but it does vary sometimes. So again, dump this on, you know the drill grain halation off. Just going to drag this up, separate it out. That's visually a bit nicer for me. Now this shot's a bit weird because I'm very small, but we're still going to crank that exposure up, bring it up. That's looking pretty good there. My balance isn't actually too bad, to be honest. It's kind of hard to see the skin here, but it's looking pretty good there. Going to turn on my pre-convert as normal. Now I want to make sure these blacks kind of here do go fully black. So I'm going to bring up my gain a little bit and then just take down those shadows a fair bit as I really want that tunnel effect in this shot. And just looking at me, let's bring that up. Actually, don't forget to warm it up. Jump in here. Yeah, I think for this clip, I'm going to leave it as is. We can kind of mess around here. I kind of feel like I want to pull it a little bit towards the blue side because this shot, it's on a rainy day. You know, you're feeling a little bit, maybe not down, but low energy is probably the way to put it. So bring that down. And if we full screen that, that shot it's looking pretty good. So there's nothing crazy in those adjustments. It's more about knowing which ones to do in which order and then just kind of finding a look that you like and you're happy with is really the main thing here in this process. And so I don't just keep talking into this microphone awkwardly for the next two hours. I'll see you next time.